what I really think is this is going to get a lot of your guys' feet wet when it comes to actually periodizing your work because the, the five week runtime is gonna fit your attention span. Where many of you, if you commit to a 12 or 14 week program, you're gonna get three weeks in and be like, screw this, I'm gonna go do 531 for the 90th time. What's going on guys, it's Bromley at Empire Barbell. Today we're gonna cover part one of Johnny Candido's six week program and we're gonna start with the bench press segment. Now real quick, I'm trying to get as many subscribers as possible because the bigger following I have, the more content I can put out on a regular basis. So go ahead and click the like and subscribe button. Go ahead and hit the notification bell. I'm putting out four videos a week. You don't wanna play catch up, get them as they come out because we're turning them out. I appreciate all your support guys, you've been awesome. Let's keep this train going. So initially I was gonna cover the entire six week program that Johnny Candido put out. I've gotten a lot of requests for it. I decided to break it up because it became very obvious upon looking into it that the bench segment and the deadlift and squat segment, while following similar principles, they're structured a bit differently. So I figured it would make sense to treat them as two separate entities. Looking at this, there doesn't seem to be any reason that you couldn't do either one independently of the other. So we're gonna treat the bench program as its own program and go from there. Now, I wasn't really familiar with Johnny. I knew that he had a successful YouTube channel. I knew he had a pretty big following. I knew he was a very good, uh, raw power lifter, a sleeved power lifter. He competes in the IPF, I guess I can forgive him for that. But I hadn't really watched any of his videos, I wasn't that familiar with most of his content. So I gotta say I was actually really impressed going to his site, reading through some of the stuff he put out. It's very obvious he knows what he's talking about. The way the program's structured, it shows a really good handle on foundational principles. And the fact that, I mean, it looks kind of jumbled when you look at it first, especially when you're going through this, the spreadsheet, but that was actually kind of a good sign to me because as I dug into it and saw how everything changes week to week, I could see how he came up with all of the numbers based off of foundational principles and not really just off of what looks good and symmetrical and elegant on paper. So that tells me that he knows what he's talking about. Obviously he's a very good lifter, so that kind of goes without saying. For those of you that are interested in this, I have the link to his download from his website and you wanna get it from there. Make sure you don't get it through another a review or another spreadsheet like off Lift Vault or anything. They leave a ton of information out, get it from the source. He has a PDF that goes along with it, which by itself, I mean, it's something anybody else would be charging 20 bucks for. Uh, really good information, it breaks down the principles behind it, why he structures things the way he does. It talks about uh, options you have, variations you can make. It's a very flexible program. Uh, if you wanna use it for bodybuilding, he makes recommendations. If you're using it to speak for a meet, he makes separate recommendations. And it really highlights how much overlap there is between a lot of these principles, because at the end of the day, adding muscle and building strength is the same across the board. Uh, they really aren't so different that they need wildly different programming. So I, I appreciate the flexibility in this as well. And uh, he does go in depth. You wanna read that ad on that PDF before you try to implement this. The spreadsheet he offers, uh, you punch in your numbers and it changes all of the, the numbers for you. So to get the percentages, I just ran through and put 100 for all of them. And then that's what gave me the percentages here. I noticed, cause I had gone through another, uh, a few other reviews. I went through like, uh, Powerlifting to Win has a review of his and I noticed the percentages were actually wrong. So I don't know how he derived those or if it was from some older iteration, but these are the current percentages I got off Candido's website. And actually another thing I was impressed by, if you go get it, leave a donation. I mean, he, he gives everything away for free and says you can donate if you want, but then he actually says if you're a minor and you're just getting into it, don't worry about donating. He just wants you to get the most out of all this. I thought that was a really classy move. So for the information he's giving out for free, and if you guys stand to gain anything from this, go ahead, go to his site, leave a donation. Uh, so to get into this, uh, I'm gonna go over the broad structure and then talk about what I like about it and why it obviously gets recommended uh, regularly as a productive program. So first things first, you start off with a three day a week split. So you're starting out three days a week. Uh, we start very obviously higher volume and then we taper down and you can even see towards the end, he starts cutting out days to where you're just doing a few sets on the whole week with very high percentages. So he has his names for each phase. And, uh, which I think is interesting. Uh, I still don't know what OT means. I tried looking that up and I couldn't find it. But muscular conditioning with moderate difficulty to hypertrophy slash muscular conditioning with more difficulty, linear max OT, heavy weight acclimation, high intensity strength. And then the last week he gives you options for either deloading, testing, or repeating. Um, basically this is very standard periodization and it's very abbreviated. So this exact same model where we're doing low percentages, more sets, more frequency, and then tapering down over time, just steadily ratcheting up the percentages, 
dropping the reps and uh, harder efforts are met with more recovery. That is linear periodization to the T. Old school linear periodization would just do that over like a five month period. Um, then block periodization started to compartmentalize it. So like 12 week routines are very common now where you might see this type of phase last you know, three, four, five weeks, and then you would move into the strength phase. This might last three, four, five weeks. So this is just kind of an, a, a very abbreviated program. And this actually tends to work very well for more developed lifters. So this isn't, I'm sure this works well for beginners just from the amount of work you're doing across the board. But as you get stronger, more developed, you actually don't need to uh, stay in each phase, in each block of training for quite as long. So you'll see two week long hypertrophy blocks or two week long strength blocks if you're jumping back and forth pretty regularly. So we have two weeks of this conditioning and it looks like week one is intentionally pretty light. It's getting your toe in the water. Uh, you're running through tens, then eights, then sixes. I just now realized it's the same protocol for the accessories, just without the percentage. Tens, eights, sixes, these are all very easy percentages. Uh, second bench day is a repeat for these first two weeks. I actually kind of like that too because it shows that it's not necessarily about ratcheting something up every single time you get in the gym. This takes a more meta view. This is about getting a certain amount of work in the week and then progressing that. So it looks more at the total amount of work in the week and each workout is just a way to get volume and not necessarily a way to demonstrate some greater stimulus every time you come in. So it's more about weekly stimulus than just the workout. The third day is uh, deviating from volume so you're still getting the muscular conditioning but this is like an intensity day I've actually gone through phases where I'll do so many weeks in a volume type phase we're doing a lot of sets across and nothing's to failure and then I'll transition to several weeks where we're doing one all-out set in a similar threshold and just that variation in and of itself is enough to to keep gains going when you get a little stagnant if the percentage and rep range is the same but the difficulty gets higher so you know high effort with lower total volume versus more volume in the same threshold with lower total effort. And then in turn, you can take that all the way down where you're doing kind of easy volume versus really high intensity stuff in heavier percentages. So it just goes to show there's a lot of options, but he's just using a different tactic on this third day to get a little bit of variety to continue muscular conditioning. And then again, moving into uh, week two, everything just ratchets up. It gets a little bit heavier. Uh, he has 80% to 75%. I'm assuming that's not a typo. I would have thought it would have been switched, but it looks like he has you going a little heavier week one than week two on that day three. And then once we start to move into these heavy weeks, then we take a, uh, take the third workout away. And now we're in the 85 to 90% range for these two weeks, the, the linear max OT and the heavy weight uh, acclimation. And now we're just doing fours and sixes, and then we're into threes, and you're steadily building up throughout the weeks until you finish with 95% for one to two reps, which should give you a really good idea of what your strength is doing by then. Recovery's high at this point. Uh, taking away that third day makes a big difference, especially with all the accessory that comes in. It's not just that one set you're missing out on. By taking that third day away, that's all of this accessories and getting done on that third day. So that's a big hit of recovery. And then eventually it all accumulates with 100% for what is basically an AMRAP on week five. Week five is kind of the money week. Week six, there actually isn't any work unless you plan on testing. And it gives you an option. You can either uh, deload, you can test, or you can just repeat and go right back into it. Now, another thing I like is the way he handles the accessory stuff. So he has rows, dumbbell overhead presses, weighted pull-ups. He gives you options for doing the same type of work uh, as long as you're doing some back work, some shoulder work. And then he gives you two more slots for optional exercises that you can put whatever extra accessory you want uh, regarding your upper body. So it comes out to five total accessory exercises. So that tells you it's a very bodybuilding oriented split. You have your progression for the main lift and then everything else is secondary movements that are designed to pad your upper body. So it acknowledges the role of these accessory exercises in building up a bench press. The things that a strong bench press requires stronger delts, strong upper back, strong triceps, strong biceps. I mean, even getting your forearms stronger can help you control the bar, strong pectorals, strong delts. Benching by itself doesn't necessarily build all those things to an optimal capacity. So while the bench is a very good developmental tool, we can still do better. And adding in variety, hitting different angles, you know, getting your shoulders strong is a big thing. There's a lot of guys that have developed big benches with poor shoulder strength, but we know that if you get your delt stronger, your bench flies up. Uh, he says that he doesn't tend to prioritize tricep work and actually kind of agree with this because the frequency of benching paired with the frequency of overhead pressing 
tricep work tends to be overkill in that scenario. And I can absolutely see that if you're benching three days a week, there's really no good spot to throw in tricep work without potentially affecting your performance. So it's really more about the manipulation of volume and intensity over time to get uh, your numbers going up. Then it really is about targeting every little specific weakness. There's enough work to keep you well-rounded, but the idea is you are gonna get a lot of development because the frequency is so high and because the progression is so aggressive. So that actually kind of makes sense to me. Now, if you're doing less frequency, then you do have more time to recover. So you might want to then again, prioritize. But even just the strain on the elbows, I can't imagine what trying to do like skull crushers would be like with all of the pressing that starts this off. Uh, all of these exercises are done every single time you bench to the exact same rep specification. So this represents three specific workouts in week one. Every time you bench, you're gonna run through this accessory work. The other thing you're gonna notice is that he actually periodizes the accessory work. This is something that uh, Ed Cohn's talked about and it makes perfect sense. If you're in a volume phase starting off, doesn't it also make sense to work volume for the accessory work to try and again, build some muscle, uh, increase your capacity, and then as time goes on, you taper down and get heavier so it gets more specific to strength because just like your lift as a whole, we wanna build that foundation of mass and then refine it with more neurological stimulation with heavy weight down the road. Similarly, if we're saying, uh, talking about your triceps or your pectorals, we wanna do something similar on a, mic uh, on a smaller scale, on a microcosm of that. So uh, I've heard a lot of people do this. It's evident in a lot of good programs that lean heavily on accessory where you can wave those down just as much. Um, like I literally just noticed looking at this right now that the set and rep schemes for the bench appears to be the same rep, uh, set and rep scheme for your rows, overhead press and pull-ups. Uh, what, 10, 8, 6 to 8, 10, 8 and 6s, uh, 10, 10, 8, 6, 10, 10, 8, 6, uh, 3 sets of 4 to 6, 3 sets of 6. So it goes to show that everything's in lockstep. I remember reading a review about Chad Smith's um, powerlifting program manual, and it got pretty good reviews, but one of the shortcomings somebody referred to was that it talked about accessory, but it didn't make clear how the accessory was considered with regards to overall training volume. Um, it, it left kind of this blank spot. It's like, okay, well, how do I treat the accessory if I'm worrying about all this stuff with the main lift? I mean, does this count as overall volume? Which exercises do I count as squatting volume or pressing volume, which don't count at all or do I not keep track of? This provides a pretty straightforward answer if we look at it, which is whatever manipulations you're making to the main lifts, you you make similar manipulations to the accessory and that's just a really easy way to do it. If you're looking for a recovery week, like week three, everything gets really heavy, but that's the first week we take this, this uh, third day out. Uh, and then he actually has you drop out the optional lifts just for that week. So this week is a recovery week. Well, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't drop the numbers here to recover. You wouldn't drop the volume and the frequency to recover, but then jack up your training volume and the accessory because that would be counter to what you're trying to do. So that just shows how those different things kind of work in lockstep together. So this is a pretty even, this is pretty straightforward. When you look at the, the whole thing together, it looks very jumbled and hard to follow, but this is actually pretty straightforward. Tens, eights, and sixes on week one and two, uh, three sets of four to six on week three, then you're going into pretty much one to three reps on everything. He has you kick the, the volume back up for the accessory, but uh, it tapers back down a little bit. I really like this pyramiding style. Pyramids are old school, but they're regularly used for a reason. They are effective. It gives you exposure to a variety of rep ranges. It gives you exposure to, uh, to multiple components at once. We're not so hyper fixated on one thing. I like this stutter step where we do kind of like a 10, 10, then eight and six, because it biases more towards high reps and it still gets your toe in the water. That one set of six, it still gets a little bit of neurological stimulation, reminds you what heavy weight feels like. You're fatigued, so your mindset isn't gonna be so much about lifting as heavy as possible, so it breaks that cycle of just trying to emphasize whatever the heaviest set is, um, but it's enough to kind of get one toe in the water, get a little bit of neurological stimulation while still prioritizing volume and high rep work. One of the reasons I think this works, I think, these first two weeks are probably really where the money's at for most people to run through it uh, because volume is obviously a good developer. We know that, but more importantly, it's not just about something being a good tool. It's about how sensitive you are to it. So the more you train a specific threshold, the more resistant you're going to be to growing. Well, many of you guys don't do your main work to that threshold. Many of you guys, 
Don't run through pyramids on your bench. You want to be fresh as possible for your top set. Most of you guys don't do a lot of tens and eights with your compound movements. Most of you guys don't do five uh, solid true blue compound accessories. Most of you guys uh, slack off on it. So just adhering to this amount of work, this is largely going to be a novel stimulus to you guys, and it's gonna hit a sweet spot. It's one of the reasons when I do a periodization program for a lot of people I get for the first time, I almost always start them out with tens across the board because I know that they're very unlikely to be conditioned to that. It's going to be a fresh stimulus. It's gonna be meaningful. So I really like this program, the way it's put together. It actually, it's more, uh, more elegant, more symmetrical than I thought it was gonna be when I first looked at it. But this is, like I said in the beginning, this is a sign that he has a handle on good training principles. He knows exactly what he's doing through each phase. The goal is to start with high volume, taper down over just a few short weeks, start to acclimate to heavier weights. So we're refining, we're taking all of that capacity, we're taking all of the, whatever hypertrophy we get in the first couple of weeks with all of this volume accessory we're not used to doing. Then we start to incorporate recovery by peeling back work. And then we start to taper the weights up. And by week five, it looks like that's where you, uh, where everything comes together with a, a PR 100% for, he puts like one to four reps or something. It's basically an AMRAP. You're just doing as many as you can. Well, I haven't run this. I've ran, I've ran plenty of programs like this. I've worked my accessory to a similar way. I've, uh, I've progressed my main lifts in a very similar way. Uh, my time frames are a little bit different. So if I'm looking at this as just an obvious application of periodization programs. The one thing that does stand out is the abbreviation, how short these uh, these blocks are. So you could look at something that, let's say, Chad Smith has put out about how to organize blocks. Uh, he's, he's covered how you can do just a couple weeks of hypertrophy or just a couple weeks of strength, but you can pair them together. So maybe you'll do two of those two week blocks in a row and then maybe you'll only do two weeks of the next block and you can kind of arrange them based on what you think your perceived weakness is or what you need more time in. There's a lot of options in how much time you spend in each phase. Like I said, this is representative. This is a very condensed example of what are typically much longer phases. I'll spend a lot more time in the volume phases because I like them and I tend to respond to them. The higher reps are actually a lot more conducive to strongman because, because I need to be able to fill out a minute when I'm doing a rep event. So I don't tend to spend so much time with, uh, with heavy weight. If you are a very accomplished power lifter, you might find that you don't need to be in this phase that long to really get a lot out of it. And then you can more quickly go into the, uh, the strength component and spend more time there. There's a lot of ways to organize this. The, this represents, it looks like about two weeks of hypertrophy, about two weeks of strength, followed by a test phase. I've heard reviews that um, people have said it typically works out very, very well the first time and returns tend to diminish the second time. And I think that's a sign not that it loses efficacy, but that's just you get stagnant because this is no longer such a brutal um, novel stimulus. This now becomes something you're more acclimated to. So the thing that really got you moving in the beginning uh, isn't necessarily gonna provide the same returns. And that's gonna be where you're gonna need to spend more time or get a little more aggressive with your, your rate of progression. Um, I would think that if somebody runs through this multiple times, subsequent phases, if you're not just extending each block, let's say spending a little more time in a volume or a little more time in a strength phase, uh, you might focus on exercise selection. You could replace some of the uh, dumbbell accessory work with uh, different variations. You could, uh, instead of just benching, you could bench and then follow it up with a bench variation in a similar template and then go into your accessory. Uh, long term, you have to know what your options are for increasing the stress when stagnation sets in and that's going to be either finding a way to do more work or it's going to be finding a way to vary something in a way that's going to once again cause uh, a new surge of growth just like this variation tends to be in my opinion the thing that's going to make this work for a lot of you guys long story short uh, i think this is a very solid program i think this is a good introduction to periodization what i really think is this is going to get a lot of your guys's feet wet when it comes to actually periodizing your work because the, the five week runtime is gonna fit your attention span. Where many of you, if you commit to a 12 or 14 week program, you're gonna get three weeks in and be like, screw this, I'm gonna go do 531 for the 90th time. So I really like this as a way to get your feet in. And then you guys will realize as you run through it, let's say you run through it again, it'll make more intuitive sense. Well, maybe I'll 
extend that first phase. Maybe I need a little bit more time in that volume phase before I really start to get heavy. Maybe I can actually cycle through weeks three and four a couple of extra times, milk it a little bit more. Maybe I can actually do a longer taper going into that heavier week. And that's where you're gonna to start to make manipulations and take notes and actually see what a uh, fully fleshed out long-term competition cycle looks like. So thanks for watching guys. Uh, I'm gonna follow this up with the squat and deadlift components of Candido's six week program. Uh, go ahead and leave questions and comments in the comment box or go ahead and take it to the forum, empire-forum.com. We can get a long discussion going on about this. Uh, thanks again for watching. Appreciate everybody's support. You have been awesome. Until next time, this is Bromley from Empire Barbell. I'll see you.